uh, welcome back to the stream. Um, oh, you know what? Let me turn this on. There we go. That's better. Um, oh, have you, um, I don't know if anyone's tried this, this, uh, yellow LaCroix or something. Yeah. Yellow lemon cello. It's pretty good. Um, okay. So, uh, all right. I made like one change to ping. Um, <laughs> I'm sorry, my voice is like super loud in this. <laughs> my voice is super loud in this, uh, in these headphones. It's crazy. Uh, yeah, that's so loud to me. Um, I even turned it down too, but whatever. Uh, okay, so what did I do? Uh, let me, let me open it. Oh, you know what? Let me, yeah, let me open it. I wonder if you can see that. Oh, yeah, you can. Okay, that's cool. Um, okay, let me see. All right, so I did, actually, let me just navigate to it. I don't even know what I did. Oh, I did a lot of stuff. Um, what the heck is DocuMain? <laughs> what? <laughs> okay. Uh, oh, you know what? It's because I was pushing straight to Docu. That's what it was. Okay, well, whatever. Uh, so yeah, I tried to get rid of this translation thing uh, in Safari. Oh, you know what I did? No, I know what I did. I'll show you. Um, it's actually, it's really cool. So, um, instead, I'll just show you what a cellular mitosis. What's up? What's going on? <laughs> um, I am a nerd. I'm still, still streaming, you know, after all this time, there's something about it, you know? Uh, what was I going to, yeah, let me see. Oh, you know what? I can't, I can't even connect because I need to connect to tail scale. Hold on. Okay. Also, my stream is way better because I'm hardwired into the router. <laughs> so cat six way better than Wi-Fi. Okay. Let me try to connect again. It should be faster this time. Let me see. There it, there it is. Okay. Um, okay. So the, this was going up a lot. Um, you know, there's no one really, like I think I have one person besides me. Um, so this ping thing was like going crazy, right? Every five minutes I was inserting into the database. But now if I look at uh, this one, right? Here, I'll just go up. Oh, it doesn't keep the thing um what was i doing oh yeah can i do this id okay no i can't i think if i do this right then i'm okay yeah um so yeah let me do group um date oh you know what i have to do sql lit uh date what is it created at? Um, is it uh, Unix time? Right? I think it's just Unix time. Unix epoch. I think it's epoch. <laughs> I don't know what it is. <laughs> Let me see. Uh, as date. Okay. And then. Oh, let's not group. Let's just do a select on that and see what it looks like. Okay, it's it looks good. Um, let's do all. Okay, cool. So then we just do group um, by date. Okay, and then we do all. Okay. So then instead of limiting pings all. No, I think I have to do something like, like this. Okay. What is this music? 
I don't even know what's going on. Okay, uh, this, not really what I wanted. What if I just do count? Oh, that's also not, oh, what did I say? Okay, that's not really what I wanted. You know what? ID. What if I get rid of that? Okay, that's still not great. This music, I can't. <laughs> like, what is it? Alright, there we go. That's a little better. It's kind of loud, too. Oh, maybe not for you. I think I have it turned down on the on IBS. Maybe. Yeah. Alright. Uh, okay. I can't even remember what I was running before. <laughs> yeah, seriously. Uh, let me see. I, it is. It was bad, though. Like, the music's bad. This is, oh, you know what? I don't want to talk bad on it, because it's, it's, uh, for, it was free, and it's, um, royalty free too it's uh let me see evgeny um is that it let me see yeah it's this person right here but i yeah he he did like a bunch of um free stuff like royalty free what if i just did royalty free yeah, maybe it was free music archive. Um, so I just downloaded all of these things. Um, you know, it's like the unsplash of music, right? You just get terrible, mostly terrible things, right? Like stock photography, like, like, like look at this. <laughs> what is that picture? I mean, it's free, you know, so download free. What are you gonna do? I don't know. Um, oh, the SQL query, right. So uh, I was trying to show you how many by day, but it's not working. It is working, but it's not working. Uh, yeah, what? Let's see how many there are just, just with this. Okay, so there's 1,200. But if I select as date and group by date, it doesn't work? Hmm. Suspicious. What if I just do this? Count. Okay. What if I just do this? All. Okay. All right. Group. What if I do that? Is it group by? Is it uh, SQL? SQL documentation querying. This is why I just use regular SQL. But I want to use this thing because it's supposed to be. Oh, you know what? It's select group. Let's do that. And then we'll do count. Oh my gosh. Select group? Yeah. Select group, right? Am I crazy? I'm gonna increase the font size on this thing. There we go. Okay, that's better. Oh, uh, what if I just did all? It can't say as, as date. That's annoying. It seems like it should work. Group and count. Interesting. Let's try that. What if I did select? What is it? Group and count. Whoops. <laughs> this music. It's so bad. <laughs> okay, select, count as count from pings where watcher. That's not really what I wanted. It's kind of totally ignoring my uh, thingy. 
Okay, you know what? There's not even that many. What we can do is just say all and then start to use Ruby. Group by X, X, uh, created at mod 86400. Uh, and then I could say, um, 2H? Page break? No, it's not quite what I wanted. Oh my gosh. This is, I should just go back to Janet. Okay. I feel like those are the least offensive songs. I'm gonna turn it down just a little bit. There we go. Without using loop. Ooh. I guess, um, tally? What? I did not know this existed. Wow, tally. Look at that. Tally. So you just give it, okay. All right, so instead of group by, I'll just say um, map x created at. Does mod work the same way? I have no idea. Let's just take the first one. Okay, second one. Oh my gosh. Two, uh, one? Do this if I could type. Okay, that's not quite what I wanted. What if I just did tally? Oh, that is terrible. Okay, Ruby Modulus. Maybe I don't want mod. Maybe I don't want something else. All I'm trying to say, okay, is that in this job, all right, I only now, I only record changes. So either the website is down, right? Right here. Uh, and then I make a new one, right? A new change. Or it's been 24 hours since the website was last down or last uh, like recorded. So I'll just make like one insert into the database. So that's all I'm trying to say. But I, I would like to do this still, uh, mostly because I have nothing else to do. <laughs> oh, I also, I also started working on Carrier Grove, but I didn't really do anything. I just set up Docker, which I'll talk about that in a second. It's probably, I'm moving into like this like, oh, I'll just get on trend with web development. <laughs> And I should, at this rate, I'll be onto Bitcoin by next week. <laughs> and then for it to be altcoins, altcoin, D Dogecoin, you know, Chia, right? That's new. That's super new. Um, yeah, eventually I'll just be writing Solidity contracts on Ethereum. Um, just to, like totally riding the wave. What is this? I don't know what that is. Okay. I'm trying to, to, okay. So, okay, Unix Epoch, right? Let me, okay, let me just, uh, let me just do this. Okay, so that's the ep the current Epoch, right? So 86,400. I don't think that's what I want. I don't want that. Do I want to divide? Because I want, like, so if I say time, okay. So I say now, right? This is now. And then I'm gonna do now one. And then now one, right? So these should both have the same value. When modulus, <laughs> apparently not. Man, I thought I did this before. Am I crazy? Maybe I am crazy. How do you get like, okay, I'm just gonna Google. Group by day, Unix epoch. Time? Oh my gosh. Okay, oh my goodness. 
Um, okay. Between, oh my gosh, what the heck? Oh, so they do do group by date. Yeah, I guess what I could do is just use Ruby, right? Instead of trying to modulus everything. I can just say, um, uh, time at, or date. Date at. There. And then tally. Oh my gosh. Is that another thing? Time at. Time at. Okay, cool. So the time's different, but I'm getting closer. Time at to date. There it is. Perfect. Perfect! This is what I wanted to show you. Yes! I mean, it's super ugly. Like, why is this so ugly? What? Uh, what if I did uh, time at time now to I? To date? Is that not a thing? To date to S? Okay, yeah, let's do that. Okay, yes, perfect. Okay, so I deployed on April 29th. Then, uh, it was running all day on the 30th, the 1st, and the 2nd. And then I deployed this change on the 3rd, and I'm not sure what happened on the 30th, actually, because there should be 288. Maybe it was like a leap second or something. I have no idea. It should have run every five minutes, and there should only be so many five-minute periods, right? 288 times 5. 1440? Okay, that doesn't really tell me anything. But all I'm saying is there's only so many uh, five-minute intervals in a day. And that should all be the same. All three of these should be the same, but they're not. So whatever. So anyway, on the third, like later in the day, I deployed this change, and the, and the number of records went down. And then today, right? Or UTC today, uh, May 4th, only one, one record. That's perfect. This Now I can have a million people sign up. No problem. SQL, I can handle it. All right. Okay, so I'm gonna go over here, and, okay, so this is baby carriers, right? Collectible, auctionable baby carriers. I don't have a baby, but uh, you know what? People have babies, and people wanna collect baby carriers. So who am I to stay in their way, you know? So this is currently what the website looks like, right? Or blah, looks like on, on uh on render right uh so i did this today uh it didn't have any of this stuff um it didn't have so i i ditched vagrant right i've been i've been using vagrant for so long but i was like what am i doing i can just do this and it's the same so that's what i'm gonna do right i'm gonna just show you this it's not showing oh it is okay all right, so what's funny about this is that Docker Compose is actually faster than Vagrant. <laughs> I've been using Vagrant, and then I was like, oh, I'm gonna use a Docker provider for Vagrant. And I was, it was so confusing. Like, there's not a lot of good, um, like there's not a lot of good documentation um about this to move away from virtual box uh like this is what they'll tell you great how does that help me i don't i don't know but um but yeah so now i'm using docker i'm not i i don't ssh into so like vagrant you have a, a big old just fat persistent disk right it's like a whole new os with Docker, um, every time you want to like run migrations or precompile assets or whatever, um, you have to like do Docker run, and then you give it the name of the thing in Docker Compose, and then it runs. So I just want to show you what it looks like here. Whoops. Be nice if I uh, went to the right one. It looks the same. Perfect. 
Perfect. Oh, it looks a little different, I think, because I don't have a border or something. I'm not sure. But yeah, look at that. Incredible. You can't tell the difference. And I did a bunch of stuff under underneath the the uh, the on the on the back end. So yeah, now this thing, right? It has. I'll just show you the gem file. It has Rhoda. It has web server. It's got SQL. It's got views. Okay, it's got Rat Console, Hash ID, it's got Postgres, Mailer, Background Jobs with Sucker Punch, uh, it's got Hot Code Reloading, um, it's got Model Annotation, it's got models, okay? I'll show you. So this is this is a model, this is the user's model, right? So it, it writes out the comments of what uh, is in there, um, like the schema. Perfect. Um, it has a bunch of good stuff that I could really go on and on about, but this is Docker Compose. This is a Docker Compose to do it all. So if you're making a rack app that's not Rails and you want to get it running with Docker and you don't want to like mess up your own computer uh, with all this stuff, um, which yeah, because Docker has its own uh, file system, right? Hey, Matt, what's up? Yeah, I'm doing it. I'm doing it. Mostly because, uh, like, I mean, I'm still working on ping, but, um, you know, it's whatever. See you later. Peace. Um, yeah, I am doing it. Uh, so, yeah, I this is what I did today um, before the stream. Um... I have this, I have, a, I have one Docker file and then I just got lazy and I was like, you know what? Now that I have this one Docker file, which if we were using Docker in production, you could, you could use this. Um, but yeah, so all it does is just use the Ruby three one and then it just puts in build essential and libpq dev for native gem extensions. And then uh, it runs bundle install and uh, it's ready to go. It starts the server. So uh, here's the Docker Compose. Um, it has Postgres as a database, and it saves the it saves Postgres data to the to the temp folder in the directory. Um, and it just uses the Postgres database, like whatever, whatever's on there. I didn't make a new database. <laughs> uh, um, yeah, so, and then it, it also has a separate volume um, to, so you can install new gems after the fact. Um, so, so you would do, um, you would do a, a Docker run web or something, um, bundle install, right? And then, uh, oh my gosh. Okay, so you would do, oh, maybe it's Docker compose run web bundle install. Yes, okay, all right. <laughs> so then it starts the web Docker container and then it runs bundle install, but it also uh, saves it to your machine and under bundle cache, right? Right here, see? Bundle cache, Ruby 3.0, there it is. There's all the the gems. There it is, um, sweet. So, so yeah, it does a lot of stuff um, and it works pretty well. It's really easy. Uh, like I updated the readme too. Um, yeah, let me see, what does it say? Oh yeah, right here. Make sure Docker is installed, Docker compose up. It's pretty, that's pretty basic. Like it's, it's very similar to Vagrant um, and it's faster. So that's pretty sweet. That's it. One container for the DB, one container for the thing. Yeah, I was, um, I only switched from Vagrant because I had a terrible time trying to get Postgres up and running because I never use Postgres anymore. <laughs> So I was like, oh, it's just like SQLite. You're just gonna put it on the thing and then it's gonna be ready to go. No, I had like weird locale issues and all this. I don't know what was going on, 
But um, but yeah. Oh, you know what? I should. I should uh, I should change the Twitch thingy. I should be more specific, right? Let's see. Um, I should be more specific. Of, like but Mel also, and oh jeez. Oh, I just clicked into it. Um, I should say. What can I say? Can I say this? Can I do something? I should say. What can I? Say? Uh, let me see. Do I? Oh, edit. Here we go. Perfect. Um, making an eBay competitor with Ruby, Rhoda, and that's it. <laughs> <laughs> Ruby and Rhoda. eBay? Computer. That would be crazy. There we go. eBay competitor? No. What's like a good modern one? Like auction thing? Um, open source eBay? It's not really what I wanted. Marketplaces. Is there an open source platform like eBay? Um... No turnkey solutions. Uh, okay. So he made free commerce, and he's he's answering he's answering core questions. Oh, this is ta what the heck, Quora? No, someone should just make a free Quora. I mean, I guess that's Stack Overflow or Stack Exchange, but. Yeah. Docs, an open source e commerce platform for multi language. That's a mouthful. Multi currency, available web store from PWA, headless. Eh. Um, okay, single brand. This is confusing. This is super confusing. Oh. Okay. Yeah, this is confusing. Um, what if I just use Shopify? Shopify auctions. Because eBay isn't cool. Right, no one cares about eBay. Oh, you know what? They have um, what's um, what's that app? What's that dumb app? Uh, it's like local. I don't even know if it's auctions. Um, oh, what is it called? Stupid app. Uh, <laughs> iOS app to oh, is it? I tried Solidus, which is a fork. Solidus, I am. Oh, I've been here before. Oh, this is cool. The only e-commerce platform, build, customize, scale your store, Solidus, digitally native, product, features, headless commerce, roadmap, global commerce. What is headless commerce? That's a weird, don't. Power your store, me undies. Uh, one platform reach on end-to-end -end security. Okay, it's a little PG-13, but what are you gonna do? Follow market trends at the speed of light. Uh, does it have auctions? Let me see, features. Oh, there's a demo. Uh, oh, it's just to sell though. It's not for auctioning, right? Yeah. Oh, that's interesting. I maybe there is no open source, open source auction, uh, st uh, store, right? Rails. Let's see. Penny bid. Have I been here before? What? <laughs> I have not even been to this. <laughs> what is that? What the heck? Okay, this is just a Rails read me. Uh, 2011. Auction Shopify, Auction Shopify plugin. Let's just do Auction Shopify. Product Auction. Okay, yeah. Oh, this is gonna do nothing. Oh my gosh, that's loud. Jeez. That was loud for me. I hope it wasn't super loud on the stream. Jeez. Okay. Um. Yeah, that's stupid. Okay, that's dumb. That's a that's a waste right there. That is a waste. 
it was. <laughs> um, let's see. Product. Oh, this is horrible. <laughs> oh my gosh. I mean, I wanted to talk. My stuff looks pretty bad too. Oh, this is the same thing. What? What? That's this the same. Product auction? Okay. Is it possible to have auctions on Java Fund? Oh my gosh, they linked to the same thing two years ago. Uh, huh. Wow, okay. Oh, this is probably better. Let me see. Can't. <sighs> okay. Is it going to go through it or what? Okay, yes, finally. Hello, friends. Welcome to the oh. tutorial of Shopify product auction app. Today in this video, we will learn how What's to she doing with her voice for auction. You might have used the Shopify product. Maybe that is just her voice. Using which admin can enable the bidding feature on their Shopify. Okay, I'm just going to mute this. All right. Uh, let me see. Okay. Um, okay. How does it work? Let's skip. Skip. I want to see the auctions. Okay. Maybe we should make this instead. <laughs> Just <laughs> make a better one. <laughs> uh, I'm su I'm surprised though. Maybe no one likes auctions. I don't know. I'm surprised that like eBay is the only one. Maybe it's really hard. I feel like it's not though. Automatic start auction. Okay. Is it okay? Base price, reserve. All right. I wonder how to make Shopify apps. I bet you can use Rails. Because they're on Rails. I think it's just regular web stuff. Let me see. Yeah, I'll just say eBay. Whatever. I'll just say it. I'll just say eBay. There's really... I mean, it's not cool. It's definitely not a cool thing to do. Say eBay. <laughs> I mean... <laughs> eBay, eBay. Let's look at what's been in the news for eBay. Open to accepting cryptocurrency, exploring NFTs. Oh, you know what? NFTs are auctions. That's what it is. That's the cool thing, right? NFTs. Um, rare. Is it rareable? Uh, no, it's Open C. OpenSea is the largest NFT marketplace. Okay. Uh, so this, oh, they even put this on here. Uh, okay, save thousands of lives, bid. Okay, four days. Okay, so you can place a bid. Fortmatic. What is it though? What is Fortmatic? Oh, don't let wallets own your UX. Is this like Stripe for crypto wallets? Okay, yeah. Unlimited signups, steep multi-factor, web three JS. Oh my, I gotta look at this. I gotta look at this thing, what is this? I, I would just, maybe I should get into this stupid stuff. I don't know, whatever. Adding web three. Web three is a collection. Well, Ethereum node, okay. All right, EVM compatible, whatever that means. Unlimited signups for real. Default widget. Okay, it is Stripe for. Is now Magic. Fortmatic is now Magic. I don't know if Magic's a good name. Oh, I saw something really cool. Um, so I had to tweet it. Uh, speaking of Magic, Unix Magic. Look at that. <laughs> that is awesome. <laughs> It's like, dude, we lost something from the 80s. Like, we lost some, we lost personality, you know? This is sick. Like, look at all the things. Like, he has the dollar sign, percent, right? Multiply, a little uh, less than, greater than. The root right here, um, over there, over here. There's, what else? Uh, oh, PETA print working directory. Um, M box, it looks like. I don't know what that is, but whatever. Yeah, it's pretty cool. Um, it's also a shell, uh, that he's pouring stuff into. It's pretty cool. Null is in there. Uh, shell script. Oregano, randomly. 
uh, tar, diff. It's pretty cool. Um, I thought that was pretty cool. No one else did really though. Like, it's all right, it's fine. Uh, okay. <clears throat> okay, so I'm gonna say OpenSea competitor, even though I'm not doing NFTs, um, but no one's gonna know that, that it's baby carriers <laughs> until, until uh, yeah, this sucks. Like you have to continue with Fortmatic or you, oh, you can use a different wallet. Okay, so now I have to continue. Okay. I guess you only have to do this once though. Uh, maybe this doesn't suck as bad as I thought. I mean, you just have to have this thing and then now you can do it, right? Hmm. It's interesting. Hmm. Yeah, maybe it's not terrible. I mean, it's similar to Stripe, right? It's like you, you'll click a button and then you're like, whoa, Stripe, what the heck is this? So, I don't know. I mean, it's about the same work uh, flow, I guess. Okay, crypto payment, NFT sales, eBay switching to NFTs. I mean, it doesn't have to be, uh, it, this is only NFTs though, right? Yeah. Like you can't, uh, you can't sell real stuff, right? This is something to, this is something though. Like maybe it should look like this and not like eBay. This is pretty cool. And then you can see like what, what's trending or whatever. Yeah, this is pretty, this is pretty sick. I'm getting kind of excited about this. This would be cool. Let me see, this is a lot of work. I mean, this is a ton, ton of stuff, but I think it's doable if I just clone OpenSea, right? That was weird, I thought I saw something. Uh, yeah, this is cool. Little, little John has an NFT. Um, I got an NFT, oh jeez, come on. I gotta keep this, what is my stream rated? <laughs> I can't be looking at all this stuff. Um, terrible. Uh, okay, let me see. Making an eBay competitor? No. OpenSea competitor. OpenSea competitor with Ruby and Rhoda. There we go, perfect. Um, I'm gonna say, what, do they have crypto? No, <laughs> all right. Web development, uh, software engineering, right? Software development, there it is, okay. Sweet. They don't have like languages, right? No. Java? No, okay. Oh no, I just closed it, dang it. Ugh. Okay, I'm gonna push this stuff real quick. Uh, hopefully render keeps working. <laughs> um, what, what development? No. Making an open C competitor with Ruby and Rhoda. There we go. Look, if that's not clickbait, I don't know what is. All right. Okay. Oh, this is bad. Okay. Oh, well, that's right. What is this? Oh yeah, this is, um, yeah, this is all right. Yeah, that's cool. This is actually really cool. <laughs> I like this, I like this one. <laughs> There's a lot I don't like here. I think I might just delete this one. <laughs> yeah, I might just delete that. <laughs> um, and this one's probably not very good either. Oh no, that's all right. This most of this is pretty good. This one's cool. All right, I'm gonna push this and see what happens. Okay, um, it has one migration, um, and it has there's a rake file um, that you can do rake db migrate just like Rails, right? It's like I want Rails, but I don't want that memory usage, right? So all right, I'm gonna commit this. Uh, let's see, add. Uh, a whole development environment. <laughs> okay, one commit. That's how you do it. Git push. Sweet. Um, does render... Let's see. Um, let's see. Does render... Oops, no, that's not me. It's uh, there. Um, hmm. Yeah, I wonder if render... Um, 
does actions. GitHub actions. Okay, they, they probably do. Let me see. Set up this workflow. Okay, render GitHub actions. Okay. No, no, that's not what I want. Render.com. Um, docs. Oh, it already started. Holy. Well, never mind that. I don't have to do anything then. <laughs> Manual deploy? I mean, it's already. No, new commit. Okay. Oh, what? what's this little. What's going on here? Little dots. Oh, this is exciting. Um, yeah, renders going crazy. Um, let's see. Disks, environment. Add environment variable. Rackam for production. Okay. Um, and then I also need secret file. That's cool. Um, okay. Oh, no database. Yeah. Uh, let me see. So for this, I think new uh, databases. New database. One day left. Oh man. Region, sure, Oregon. Wait, how is it Germany or Oregon? Oh man, render, dude. You need you need more data centers. What the heck? Um, is there a free version here? There's no free version? Nah, whatever. Uh dang, this is expensive. This is why I use Dagu. Uh, let me see. Carrier Grove Production. Uh, let's see, what do I have here? Let me open this up. Okay. App.rb, model, database URL. I also need a session secret, which I should, <laughs> I should probably not show it on this. Here, I'll just do it secretly. I'm gonna just paste it in there. Uh, all right, you can't see this when I'm typing now, but um, but yeah. Okay, let me just uh, require secure random, right? You cannot see this, hopefully. Yes, okay, good, perfect. Uh, let's see, uh, what is it? Uh, safe, URL safe, right? Sa uh, safe base 64. We're gonna do 64 bits of entropy. Um, okay, let me see. So I got copied that. Um, I go back to this thing, back to the, oh no, jeez. Oh, All right, what does it say? Um, what does it say? Nothing? Shell? No. Sharing? Oh, you, oh, you have access to the shell. Oh, whoa, that's cool. Let me see. How does it, uh, how can we see what, okay, here we go. Oh. The key not found, database URL, there it is. See, we needed it. Uh, let me keep adding environment variables. Add, wait, did I just add one? Am I crazy? Am I, did, <laughs> add, um, rack amp, production, save. Okay, that was weird. What if I go away and come back? Okay, all right. Uh, let's see, database URL is gonna be something. Um, oh, what's, what's this generate? Oh, that's cool. Um, hopefully, Iraq env, uh, session. Session secret, which I might just, uh, oh. Well, you can't see the whole thing. So, be it now, I don't have to change it. Uh, session secret, what else do I need? I need... Again, okay, session secret and database URL. I need, uh, no, I need one more. Uh, I need hash ID salt. Um, hash ID salt. That is going to be another thing, but it's going to be 16 bits. Bytes? Not bits. 
Uh, okay. Oh, you can see that, so I'm just gonna do that real quick, and uh, hopefully that's all right. Uh, let's see what else. Um, there is a database URL, which I will go over here. New database. Carrier Grove Production. Yep. Do not care. Create database. Seven dollars a month. Whew. Man. <laughs> That's a lot. <laughs> I guess I'm so cheap. Man. Um. I am cheap. I have a problem. I have a serious problem. Okay, let's see. Host name is this. Um, I do not want to show you this, so I will just open another window that you cannot see. Um, I'll just take you back to querying, and then you can't see this now. Okay, perfect. Yes, you cannot see it. Okay. <laughs> Uh, internal connection string, which you cannot see, but that is okay uh, by me. Okay, you still can't see this, right? Okay, perfect. Database URL. Save changes. Okay, so I think it's still making the database. Uh... Yeah, we probably don't want to allow access to the database everywhere. Um, but that's okay. Okay, so I think it's still creating. It's still going. What do I refresh? Two minutes and still creating. Hmm. Uh, okay. All right. Services. Good. Okay. Um, oh, it oh it deploys on every environment change. Deploy canceled. What? I'm so confused. Why did all this deploying happen? Oh, environment updated. It tries to deploy on every environment change. Wow, that's annoying. Okay. I think it uses what does it use? Cloud native build packs or something? Um, render, render. Cloud native build packs. It probably does. No, maybe not. Hm. It's interesting. Uh, cause it's not using my Docker file, is it? I hope not. That's for development. Um, all right. Let's see. Okay, it is still failing. Um. Oh wow. Okay. Select from users. Users does not exist. No kidding. The migrations haven't run. <laughs> um, why is it trying to select from users? Wait, what? I'm super confused. Oh, um, that's SQL trying to do that. Uh, okay, so I need to PRs. I need to environment. No. I need the. I need the shell. But I also, no, this isn't even what I want. CD project source? No, that's what? Okay, I don't know what they're using, but uh, whatever. I need rack console. Um, I need something. Oh, docs on the bash script that gets run. Okay, let me just do, let's try this. Let's try, it'll probably tell me. Hello world, render, oh. Render.yaml. Oh, they have a thing. They have a special thing. Render build sh. Um, migrate. Oh, this is render build. Yep, this is it. This is it. Okay. Oh man, you would think that they would just somehow let you do it through the UI, right? I mean, you're paying all this money. Oh man, all right, well, what are you gonna do? Uh, okay, let me just copy this. Render, disappointed. I'm disappointed in you, render. Uh, okay, create a file. 
in the database that is used. New from YAML. That's what I'm looking for. That is what I'm looking for. Is it settings? Uh, wait. How do I get... Wait, go to the YAML page. Oh. 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 <laughs> okay. I, I guess I created something. I must have created a service. Oh no, I see. Why? Because the database is one service and the service is another. Render.yaml. Okay. Oh, okay. So, oh, oh my gosh. There's a whole spec. Oh, man. <laughs> if I was going to write YAML, just go to AWS. Uh, okay, let me see this. So actually, I think AWS is probably cheaper than Render at the lower end. Oh, man. All right. Let me just copy the Rails one remix it hey you think there'd be some way just to run it just one off uh, is there like a render cli or something can i do that i guess you don't want to uh to do that manually oh i should add that to my my ping bits oh you know what i wonder if you could just run sql migrations without a rake task just when it starts up I guess I could do that too. Oh, I could update the build command in settings to run a bash file. Let me see. Settings, build, oh, build command. Oh, perfect. Uh, runs in the root directory. Oh, perfect. So all I have to do is do this. <laughs> Sweet. <laughs> let's see if it works. Uh, nice. Okay, let's see. Deploy hook. Oh, that's cool. Okay, well, whatever. Uh, okay, let me just try it. Build command updated. Let's look at it. Let's look. Let's look. I mean, I guess it could be a bash file too, but it's all right. It doesn't matter. Downloading cache. Downloaded. Extraction. Uh-oh. Um, can't find gem. Oh, my goodness. Thought it'd be easier. I thought it'd be easier. Maybe I have to bundle exec. Uh, when a new... Oh, okay. Uh, okay. So I guess I need... I do need a, a thingy. The bundle install command. Oh, yeah, that's right. <laughs> I do need to script that. <laughs> bundle install... <laughs> There we go. It's perfect. It's perfect. Uh, just you know, double ampersand. No bash script required. I'm gonna. I'm just gonna grab this though for real. Uh, build. Yeah, because they do bundle install. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Uh, I think I do need bundle exec though. Okay. Let me make this. What do they call this? Render build sh. Okay. Don't need that. Although, am I pre-compiling assets? Oh, you know what? There's no Nginx. Oh, man. I don't know what's going on. Oh, wait. Uh, enable the public file server when render environment variable is pleasant, which it always is on render. env public file server enabled. Oh, my goodness. There's like a whole other world here. Okay. Config database YAML find the production section. You want to find it to get a database, blah, 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 blah. Okay. Config Puma. Add the highlighted lines workers. That is, I don't care about that. Uh, config public file server enabled. Okay. So disabling serving. Oh, okay. So I did that already from the by default since already handles this. Okay, so they are, they already know. All you have to do is disable it. Okay. All right, chmod, make it executable. I don't need this, I don't think, because the assets compile on startup. So hopefully that's all right. 
Okay, let me see. CH mod, render build. Okay, let's put it in the roots because that is what I do. Render build. Uh, and render build. Push. Wait for render to pick it up and watch. There's um, man, this music is really uh, crazy. Um, there's a uh, there's an XKCD about this. Um, you know, of course it's uh, waiting for the you know continuous deployment thing, but same thing. You know, same old thing. Uh, let's look. Man, ever since I switched to the Cat Six cable, oh my gosh, the um, this stream is like uh, rock solid. You know, it's crazy. Oh, I don't have any Lacroix. I'm out of Lacroix. Dang it. All right, well, what are we gonna do? Okay, let's see. Oh, deploy started already. Okay, let's look. Oh. Okay. Oh, jeez. I okay. Uh, dot slash. Do I need dot slash? What did I do wrong? Uh, I think I need dot slash. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Great. Did I not do dot slash? Oh yeah, I did not. I will get there eventually. Uh, eventually, this will happen. <laughs> this, this will happen. It's nice that it took me back to the new build, though. That's pretty nice. So far, I don't know, man. Like, this is not a Heroku-like experience, you know? <laughs> There's a lot. There's a lot to do still. Yeah. I don't know if I like that. Oh. <sighs> My gosh. What does it say? Oh. What? Can't live rake. Render build? Oh. Wait, no, that was the right one. Oh, it'd be nice if I could quit this. There we go. Render build. Bundle exec rake. Bundle completed. Fail to load command rake. Uh, rake is currently not is not currently included, but really, do I just have it installed randomly? Is that? Let's look at the gem file. Do I really? Need, do I really need to? All right, let me see. Uh, rake Ruby gem file. Wow. You I you would think that it comes with bundler, right? I mean, am I crazy? Gem rake. Uh, I guess this is man. Just this is what. Well, wait. This is the wrong gem file. What? Dude, open the right. Open the right gem file. What the heck? It's weird. Gem rake. All the things that Rails does for you, you know? It's crazy. I miss it sometimes, you know, sometimes. In the Ruby world, anyway. Okay, let me do uh, Docker Compose Run. Um, I bundle install? No, web. Bundle install. And you think Docker would just make a render or just like buy a render and they can make some money. Uh, um, I did not see it here. Oh, there it is. Okay. Okay. And rake to gem file. It's nice to learn all this about the Ruby uh, ecosystem though, you know? It's nice. Events, okay. Oh man, 
random people are probably like, who's this idiot doing all this? This probably happens all the time though, honestly. Uh, okay, let me check the settings real quick. Render build, okay, yeah. If that doesn't do it, Um, I am a little concerned about the- oh, jeez. The assets, I'm super concerned about the assets. Relation users does not exist. Did it not run? Rake TV migrate? Oh. Um, okay. Um, undefined table. Okay, bundle gems, gems. Rake aborted. <laughs> oh my gosh. Jeez. Okay, um... Uh, Docker Compose, uh, Web Run, Rake TV Migrate. What? Is it? Oh, Web Run. Run Web. I'm pretty sure I tried this already. Okay. Rake file? Require. Oh, because I'm rec. Oh, jeez. Okay, man. Thought I'd get clever here. SQL Core. Add emp. Okay. I will run this once again. Yeah. It would be nice if they could do this for me, but, you know, whatever. Um, <laughs> oh man, all right, come on, render. It's like, um, okay, man, it picks that up super quick. <laughs> Gee, I will say that <laughs> that's actually kind of nice. Um, Okay, so declaring series and render or by manually setting up you're using a dashboard. Yeah, that's interesting. Render.yaml. What why is YAML? Like why is YAML the thing? Dude, do I do we not like this? Do we not like Pulumi's too new? Right? Cloud engineering for everyone. It's too new. You can't even do it, right? Pulumi 3.0. Oh, this is sick. The new website's amazing. Um, one member, any cloud and language. Dude, incredible, incredible. Look at this, uh, modern infrastructure as code. Today we'll use Pulumi, an open source, modern infrastructure as code tool oh, for he said it. cloud infrastructure. <laughs> he said it again. Pulumi supports lots of clouds and different cloud architectures, but today we'll be oh, creating geez. an AWS S3 website. I've already downloaded and installed the CLI. It's available in packaging. Actually, I wonder if you can see that. If I break it and out a into new the... the Oh, you we'll can't even see it. New command, oh, wow. Which scaffolds a new project. Notice that there are many clouds in many languages, but we'll select Ooh, many AWS. clouds. I'm gonna go. I'm just gonna go to YouTube. Many clouds and languages. Oh, it worked. I wasn't even watching. Okay, it worked. <laughs> right. What does it say? Oh, build successful. There it is. Bundle gems, uploading build, build successful, deploying. Sweet. Uh, oh, deploy live. Oh, that's all it took. Uh, okay, cool. So, oh, it ran running build command render build. Okay, cool. Sweet. Uh, okay, so is it still around? Is it still working? I don't know. <laughs> Let's look. Hey, it's still working. Sweet. Put in my email. All right, why not? I am not a robot. Submit. Hey, nice. Cool. All right. So now I think I want to do all um, UI stuff. Uh, you know what? Do I have an app CSS? I do. That's a good, this is a good uh, test of the assets. Yeah, that's what I thought. That is what I thought. App dot un, yeah, cannot load. Okay. All right. Uh, that sucks. So I think, 
Hmm, not really sure. Oh, you know what? I'm gonna go to the video. Oh, what happened to this? Why is it muted? Oh. Values are programmed and determines what resources need files in many languages, but we'll select AWS TypeScript. We'll select the default. Where's the Ruby? We'll enter the Lumi. Create a new Ruby. stack. The stack is an instance of our project. We oh. Of them. And we'll put this in the US West 2 region. Pulumi will then go ahead and install all of our dependencies, and we're up and running and ready to go. Amazing. So let's take a look at the index.ts file, which is where our infrastructure is defined. It starts with a set of packages, and notice we're creating an S3 bucket object. That's how infrastructure is declared in Pulumi, by allocating regular objects in a programming language. We also export the bucket name at the end. Now let's run Pulumi up. This command evaluates our program and determines what resources need to be created, updated, or deleted. It shows us a preview before making those changes, and we can get details to see all the properties on our resources. If we select yes, Pulumi will proceed with making. This is either the best idea or the worst idea. <laughs> I mean, it beats YAML, right? To me, I'd rather write example, regular code than YAML. That's what I'm. That's what I'm saying. Although additional options are available. Yeah. Let's I would also rather. Yep. Now let's yeah, our I'd also rather uh, our file to our we'll create a w right, Ruby folder or Janet, but that's not here. Yeah. And let's create some simple markup. Operators. Crystal. Uh, interested QDSL, Kubernetes we'll resources. populate the bucket with this new file. Pulumi makes this really easy because we have hmm. full access to all of the programming Looks like YAML. Features. In this case, we'll use the standard Node.js FS package. We'll loop over the directory contents of the www folder. And then for each entry, we'll create a new S3 bucket object. We'll give it the name of the directory. We'll make sure it gets added to the right bucket. We will tell it to take the file contents from a relative file. You can do some disk. serious damage, though. Uh, and from there, <laughs> Hey, with this. All we need to do is go back to <laughs> you can do some serious, serious damage compared to what we had previously, which is just a new oh object. man. We can look at the details again, uh, but let's proceed and actually upload this to the bucket. Uh, this will happen very quickly, just took a couple seconds. And now, if we list the contents of the bucket again, we'll see the index.html file has been added. But we're pretty not cool, done though. Yet. We pretty cool, but yeah, renders like. Uh, yeah, I mean the YAML is whatever. I for some reason in my mind I thought render Heroku, right? Renders Heroku, but you know it's more flexible. Uh, I did see this though, which looks really cool. Um, I don't even know what Kubernetes is, but I I want this. Like I want Heroku on this thing. Like it's amazing. Like uh, yeah, like. It says BYO Cloud, um, and it has all these add-ons, right? It's got Postgres, uh, Redis, right? Uh, and then it says built on K8s, which I, I do not understand, even though I feel like I should, but yeah, this is cool. Uh, okay, so this works. This works still. Um, the assets are not working. Uh, so I think I, can I look at logs? Okay. Uh, no such file or directory. Opt render prender source views 404. Okay, yeah, it's looking for 404. Um, which it just, then it returned to 500. Uh, okay, so get assets. Okay, so I have to look at this. I have to look at render docs. Docs. Rail, Ruby, Rails. Uh, okay, deploy to render, deploy manually, no. Um, production ready, config data production, okay. Oh, you know what? I should look at um, the database just to make sure it's okay. Metrics, oh, okay. That's kind of cool, actually. This is cool, interesting, although SQLite you don't really need that. So that's one one more thing you don't need. Um, man, eight percent out of they only give you one gig, one uh, geez, one GIB. What is that? What's that? 
one GIB to GB. Oh, it's just one. Dang, that's crazy. Um, they only give you one give, one gib, one gig. Oh, my group chat's going crazy. Uh, let me see. I need to. Um, yeah. Wow, I can't believe I had Rake just chilling. Like Rake was not, was not in the gem file. Okay, what are you gonna do? Um, okay, so I need to public file server. I need to do this in Rota. Um, plugin assets precompiled, compiled assets, JSON. I don't know if I need that, I'm gonna delete that. Uh, unless development, compile assets. Yeah, that's fine, ass, ass, I cannot talk tonight. That's really bad. Uh, okay, let me see. I had to get rid of this CSB because it was blocking the iframe stuff. Our assets if development. Okay, so I think I could do public um, and then do our public. Maybe? I don't know. Let's see. Let's see if it works locally. That can compose up. like okay so in lo local it is going to do that but what I can do is say I can change oops dot m dot rb I can change this to production and we'll see how it works Hit my little spit thingy. Actually, what is this thing? It's like a, so you don't make a bunch of, or, oh, you can still hear that. Yeah. All right. Uh, okay, let's see. Yes. Oh, there it is. It's working. Okay, so the public, so what if I delete public? Why not public? Okay, it is not working. Perfect. So I think render, Render, serve assets, nginx. Nope, that is not what I want. I want render, render docs. Um, hmm. uh, ooh, docker. No, it's just like a rails. Um, Additional notes, maybe? Uh, I feel like this sh should work. A preload app. Okay, environment. Okay. It seems like they have Nginx. They have an Nginx config that Um, infrastructure as code. Long streams, no downtime deploys, regions, rollback, scaling, redirects and rewrites. Hmm. Let's look. I might have to do something here. Um, There's on deploy. Huh. Yeah, I'm not quite sure what to do there. So let's just have Rhoda. Um, yeah, let's just have Rhoda do it. Right. Um, yeah. I'll just have Rhoda serve it. Uh, because that's what I was thinking render was gonna do anyway um, cool let me see 
It only logs errors? Is that what I'm seeing? Oh yeah, I guess it doesn't matter. All right, cool. Let's see if that if this works now. Okay, so got rid of pre-compilation. Serve, so it's gonna compile the assets on start. And it's gonna serve with public. Um, serve, compiled assets in production. Should probably get rid of all this stuff. But I'll just leave it. Okay. Let's look. I think it will deploy successfully, I'm pretty sure. Um, okay, so, oh my gosh, it's 9.50. Uh, all right, what can I do in 10 minutes? I think this song is weird. Um, yeah, I don't know if I can do, oh, I can change the title. Uh, app.rb, oh no, um, home. Iframe? No, it's layout. Title, oh, it should have a title. What the heck? I say body, right? Oh, this is old. Is this old? No, it's not. What the heck? It should just be in an iframe. Iframe, head, title, carrier groove. What the heck? Maybe that's just Safari being weird. Let's see. Deploy. Still deploying. Man, I see why people use feature flags. Because um, your deploy can take forever. But you want to like make something live right away. Yeah, it's still not... Not great. Still not working. Dang it. Man, I thought for sure that would work. Um, yeah, that stinks. Well... I can at least make a 404, right? Uh, touch views 404. Uh, yes. 404. Sorry, the page you were looking for could not be found. We'll just do H1404, and then we'll just make this a paragraph. Uh, let me look at it. Okay. I should probably stop stopping that every every time. If I get things done quicker. Uh, okay, so it's still serving in... Uh, oh, you know what? I still have this as production. Oh, I don't know why I stopped it again. M.rb... Should probably send it that. Uh, I'll just do like a V stack. Div um, class V stack. Do. Uh, MX auto. I can just say center. Uh, I could do height full. Is that what I said? App.css. Um, oh, I said full screen. That makes sense. Full screen. Full. Full screen? Yeah. There we go. Perfect. Cool. Uh, okay. That looks pretty good. Actually, that's not bad. Um, we'll, I'll put, I'll put carrier groove. Um, I'll put H1 carrier groove. I don't know if it's two uppercase things, but, and we'll just say, uh, H2. Let's see what that looks like. Uh, I want more space, probably. Right? This, it should be centered, but it should have another more space. Spacing. There. And we'll just put these together. There we go. Do. 
and uh, center. And this should also be centered. Oh, text center. There we go. I can probably do text center here. And then hopefully it'll go down the line. I mean, apparently not. Center. Okay, that, that apparently that doesn't matter. <laughs> okay. All right, that's great. Uh, wow, look at that. Uh, that's not good. So display flex, uh, spacing empty. I don't need this. There. Okay. Uh, but I do need this to be. There we go. Oh man, you man, you would think that this would, uh, you know, go down the line there. Do more spacing. Let's see. There we go. Uh, cool. Um, there should be a link. A href. Um, go back home. Right. And then we'll make a path in. Um, oh, it already has a path. Home path. Do. There it is. Okay, cool. These should be, you know what? This is going to be another V stack. Center, spacing. We'll just do like small. There we go. That's not bad. 404, page, blah, 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 go back home. Okay, cool. Uh, since there are no colors or anything, so that's probably the best it's gonna get. All right. Oh, nice if I did that. Um, add 404 page. At least deploying's nice. I mean, now that I have Docu running on that other server, it's the same as render, I would say. Um, I guess it doesn't do migrations? Actually, does it? Let's look at it. Cat ping docker file. Uh, it's not looking good. It's not looking great. Docker file. It's nice that I can just use this docker file and I don't even, I don't even need Vagrant anymore. Yeah, it's interesting. Oh, man. I mean, ideally, it'd be like Dark Lang, right? Like, this would be the workflow. Um, the API, so like the language, the editor, everything is all together. And everything's always live right like when you code something um it's it's just live right uh darklang is is Writing's the, probably the oh geez grammarly can help thanks grammarly this appreciate it is grammatically correct. okay hey i'm ellen co-founder of dark and i'm excited to show you the holistic programming language editor and infrastructure we've been working on for the last two years today i'm going to show you how to build a fully functional backend for an office sign-in application Cool. But first, I wanted to do the first thing I would do in any new language, which is set up a hello world. In Dark, you don't have to install a bunch Man, of stuff icons. or get going with infrastructure before you can have a working API. Um, in fact, it's all cool that it's all in the browser, browser, though. The method it's interesting. In my response. I now have this as a JSON API that's on the internet Look at that. and available. <laughs> Don, there's nothing say, to do. Add a URL parameter to that's it, sick. Like, hello name, so I can greet my guests by name. Yeah. And if I were to do this, I could say hello to myself, say hello to my co-founder, Paul. Yep. I could say hello to everyone else who works here. That's really say cool. Say hello to you, a developer who's watching this video. In Dark, I now can see all of these full requests. And I can see what the expression evaluates to. I mean, she's moving quick. If I chose to change a piece of it, I could see what that trace would now evaluate to. So that's how you get started with Dark. But let's get into building a full backend with, say, workers and API integrations. It's insane. And your usual backend. It gets even better though. Like, she starts bringing in data from the database, and you can see it in the editor. It yeah, it gets really good. Um, that's good. Okay, let me see. Where's that deploy? 
Oh, it's right there. Deploy live. So if I go to Carrier Grove and I say 404, there it is. Nice. Um, cool. Uh, sweet. So I think um, next steps, I guess I can outline it, right? Uh, I mean, there's a readme, but is there a roadmap? Mailing list, sign up for updates on progress, payment providers, blah, 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 shipping. Shipping? I, that's up to them. I don't know. Auctions. Uh, full dollar bids. Okay. So I think um, I would do roadmap maybe. Uh, and then I would say, um, let's see, like next steps. Right, so I don't want to forget where I was. Uh, like I would do, um, what I do? I would probably say, um, okay, database schema, right? This is where I always start. <laughs> I always start with the database schema. <laughs> Okay, um, let's see, users, which already exist. Uh, let's do tables. Tables, users, um, and then I'll just do like columns, right? I'll do dots for columns because, well, this is marked down. I could, they could probably do it. Um, uh, we'll just say users, right? All this good stuff. Um, Oh, it doesn't like that. That's interesting. Uh, let's see, email, um, username, make it a little social, I guess, which the, the current uh, thing doesn't have that. Luckily it's Postgres, so, you know, whatever. Uh, what else, username, um, I don't like passwords, uh, so whatever, it doesn't matter. Should probably use road off, but what are you gonna do? Token, token. Um, okay. And then maybe I'll call it like login token or something. And it's really long. <laughs> it's really super long. Um, let's see, users. Uh, okay, auctions. Um, bids. I think. Not sure. Um, auctions? No, there's products probably, right? Products. Um, has a name. A it has a name. <laughs> That's it. And it probably belongs to a user, right? Um, and auctions. Yeah, I mean, the, a product is up for auction, so we need all of these auctions, right? Obviously, an ID. We'll just say timestamps. Right? Timestamps. And we will say auctions. They also belong to a user. And a product belongs to an auction, I think. Auction ID. Um, and a, a bid belongs to an auction, too. Um, we'll do timestamps here. Uh, and uh, what else do auctions have? A, a time, um, like a like a, a max time or something, or like a, a total time. Uh, yeah, I'm not sure. Like you can set the time. That's that sucks. Maybe all auctions should just be like seven days, right? Um, days. I'll just say days. Um, bids, uh, there's a dollar amount, right? Amount, what else is in a bid? A, a person bids, right? User ID. Uh, a person makes a bid to, in an auction. In an auction, um, is an auction part of a product or is a product part of an auction? Probably. Let's see, a product is just 
floating in space and an auction belongs to a product or does a product belong to, I think a product belongs to an auction. I think I was right the first time. Oh, that's a good point. Um, is there not a benefit? Auction item? Uh, I guess it is an auction item. There is a benefit if you want to show, okay. All right, it's like OpenSea, right? Um, you would do, like if you wanna see the things, oh, I, yeah, like by themselves, right? And then you could do other things to them. I guess auction item is similar to product though. Um, like, like this is the product, right? Like this guy. Um, and like this is like the bid over here. Or the, I'm um, sorry, the auction that's going on over here, right? Um, and these are the bids, obviously. Uh, but yeah, products can have their own details and everything. But yeah, I guess auction item makes sense, I guess. Um, that makes sense. Uh, cause then it belongs to the auction, right? And then you can have like details. I do think there is, I think there is some benefit to separating them. I guess it could make the queries more complex. I mean, cause yeah, like you're not gonna auction multiple items. Yeah, I see what you're saying. Auction items, name details, and then has a user ID, that's it. And then you can have days here, right? I, yeah, you might as well just call it auctions though, right? I mean, why call it auction items? Just call it auctions. I see what you're saying though. Like this whole thing is an auction, right? They call it an asset and they give it this, I think the wallet address it looks like, but yeah, it's similar. Uh, so yeah, the person who's auctioning off, right? Um, I mean, yeah, I guess we can call it auction items. I, I'm not gonna, <laughs> that's all right. I mean, I guess it makes sense because you're, you're only doing one thing, a date to start the auction, maybe a starting bid amount, reference winning bid, reference. I have not, I have no idea <laughs> about, about uh... oh wow, look at that. Uh, I have no idea about what, what that means. Uh, starting bid, starting bid. Um, and then, oh, you know what? Starting bid could just be the first bid, right? With the same user as the person who started the auction, right? Uh, reference to winning bid. What does that mean? Oh, like if you pay this much, you get it automatically? Max uh, winning bid. Oh, reference to a oh to the winning bid. Um, winner, 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 win. There's one bid that one. Win. Uh, winner. I'll just call it winner. No, because then it sounds like there's a user that won. I'll just say uh, winning. All right. Winning. I'll just say win. <laughs> Maybe I'll just say one. There you go. One. One equals true, right? So then you could do a query like that. You could say um, uh, this auction. Oh, auction item. Oh, man. Winning bid ID. Oh, yeah. Auction item could have a winning bid ID. Bids belong to auction, but then they have a reference back to winning bid. Oh man, this is getting, <laughs> this is getting, how do I even uh, find the winning bid? Oh, I just say winning bid. Oh yeah, I see what you're saying. So I would just do like auction. How can I find all winning bids? Oh, I see. I could just do um, auction items, select uh, winning bid, right? Winning bid ID. And then I could just do bid where 
ID, something like that. Uh, yeah, it's all right. Uh, let's see, auction item. Select winning bid. I guess this makes sense with the reference back to bid. Yeah, because then if you did auction item, bids, uh, and then you would say where one equals true versus this is first winning bid. And then the model would be like auction item. Model end, uh, one to many, no, many to one user many to one uh, bid. And then I think you have to say like what the table name is. It's bids. Um, I guess you can just say winning bid, right? So I think here you could do winning, you can do bid ID. And then it would just say, you could say many to one bid. Um, and then I think you can alias it, winning bid maybe. Uh, I'm not sure how this works, but you know, I think we'll figure it out. Um, yeah. Uh, yeah, because there's only one, but there's multiple bids, but only one winner. I guess that makes sense. Yeah. This is a pretty clean, this is a pretty clean schema, I feel like. It's not terrible. Uh, it's not bad. Auction items, I'm not a huge fan versus just auctions, but uh, you know, whatever. Uh, that's fine. Bids, name, details, days. Uh, yeah, this is this isn't bad. Amount, timestamps, um, start date maybe, right? So as you said, start date. Uh, start the uh, I think a date to start the auction. Um, I could just say start it at right. Um, what else? I think this is pretty good for now, right? And then what does OpenSea do? Browse, activity. Hmm. I wonder if people care if their activity is on blast like this. <laughs> it's a little crazy, but yeah. It'd be cool to see the, it would be cool to see which person and which, uh, collectibles which auctions are getting um you know what i just missed something huge uh image <laughs> um you can probably have multiple images well we'll just start with one um let's see what else um yeah uh, assign to favorite? I guess you want to favorite it. Oh, man. Uh, okay. Then we could do something like, um, auction items, favorites or something, right? Something like that. Uh, ID, timestamps, and then maybe something like user ID, right? Uh, Auction item ID, something like that, uh, and then that's that. And you can have favorites. Um, <clears throat> the number of views that could be important. I think I would just have a column that increments, because I don't really want to do that. Wait, what the heck just happened? Oh. Uh, roadmap. Uh, yeah, I definitely, let's see, views on auction. Views. Yep. Uh, let's see what else. That's pretty much it, I would say. Sale ends today. Hmm more 
Okay. Report is probably good to have, I would say. Um, but yeah, how do they rank these things? Volume, price, owners, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, it'd be cool to see the ranking and then like just have this view of like, these are all the things right now. Um, yeah. Okay, I can I can clone this. <laughs> I would, I would actually clone most of this. What does it look like a mobile? Um, let's look at a mobile. Uh, okay, it's just a shrunk down version. All right, filters on the bottom. To me, I would move this to the bottom. Yeah. Yep. It's gonna be basic. I think this is good for now. What the heck? Uh, okay. Oh my gosh, it's like 1016. I gotta get out of here. That is it for the stream. Um, this is how I actually think <laughs> when I make these things. Um, add roadmap markdown thing. Uh, and that's gonna deploy, <laughs> which is hilarious. All right, thanks for watching. If anyone's watching, obviously Matt, thank you for watching. Uh, I will see you on Thursday. Bye.